Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about my 2020 flower garden and it's a beautiful day today and I was out in the garden earlier today um, doing some more mulching um, as well as moving some plants around and trimming some plants. I was also transporting some newborn baby rabbits today. Um, I sometimes volunteer for a rabbit rescue agency in Vancouver and um, these like two day old newborns needed a ride across town so far. Um, and now I thought I'd talk you through some of the flowers that I'm going to grow for the 2020 season. So I have a couple books here. Um, this is the first one, it's called The Flower Garden. Um, this one is an amazing book. Um, it's, it's organized by sections. So there's a section for cottage gardens, a section for um, bold and beautiful flowers, which I would call cutting garden flowers. Um, as well as herb flowers, um, bee flowers, and some exotic flowers as well. Um, it has really good information as well as beautiful pictures. And it has, it's specifically on how to grow them from seed, which I really like because when you buy these plants as plants, it can get really expensive. This is another book. I found these two books both at the library, and this one is also just beautiful to look at. Um, and it's done by Floret Flowers and Floret Flower Farm um, in the States. Um, and this one is divided by seasons, um, but there's just beautiful, the, the pictures in here are just out of this world. They're so beautiful. Um, so I've been using this, and this will be another video I think, but I've been using these books as a way to get, uh, to kind of use my gardening, mental health, and um, self-care stuff in the winter. Because um, in the winter I can't do a lot outside, so I can still get my kind of gardening therapy fix by reading these books and just immersing myself myself in the picture, um, in the pictures of these beautiful farms. Here's some more pictures. Okay, and then I also have the um, Baker Creek whole seed catalog. A lot of the flowers that I'm gonna grow this year are from Baker Creek, as well as West Coast Seeds um, in Vancouver. So I'm gonna be using these books as I go through, um, and I'm gonna be dividing this video up into three sections. I'm gonna have the cottage garden, the cutting garden, and the herb garden, because those are the broad types of flowers that I'm growing this year. So in my cottage garden, the first one that I'm gonna talk about is this wild bergamot. And um, so this is also called bee balm. Um, it's being cultivated into a lot of different cultivars, which are man-made genetic variations um, in plants for different colors, shapes, bloom times, etc. Um, but this is the species variety or the wild variety. Um, typically, wild species varieties are better for pollinators than cultivars. A lot of the time when we mess around with plants and turn them into cultivars, um, insects haven't adapted for those cultivars, so they're gonna struggle a little bit more um, to use them um, for nectar and pollen. So I try to stick with species um, for some of my plants and then use cultivars where I really want that cultivar. Um, for example, zinnias. Um, those are most likely gonna be cultivars. I started this one um, already uh, and it's growing really well. Um, they have their first set of true leaves and I actually just moved them out into the cold frame today because um, we're getting some pretty warm weather. So yeah, they're doing pretty well. Um, you do want to start them about eight to 10 weeks from seed indoors and um, treat them like any other seed and um, just sow them on the surface. Um, I provided bottom heat for mine until they sprouted and then immediately um, took away that bottom heat. Um, so it's not even leggy and provided bright overhead light, whether that be a shop light or putting them in a cold frame. Um, the second one I'm gonna do, oh, this is really exciting actually. And um, the second type of plant that I'm doing in my cottage garden is poppies um, and I haven't really grown a lot of poppies um, before. I know Jeff at Roots and Refuge was talking about having never really grown them either. Um, I have planted some perennial poppies from plants um, and I've scattered some seeds before but I've never really you know put my mind to growing a specific kind of poppy um, and the types of poppies that I'm growing this year are really exciting. The first one was a bit of a crazy like viral moment online because uh, Baker Creek posted about bees and um, the amazing gray poppy um, and it was sold out and people were super mad commenting on Instagram saying it's sold out it's sold out and I had actually seen these before Christmas on their website and they were sold out and I wasn't sure if they were sold out or if they weren't sold out so I was checking back online um, every day uh, and so were many other people um, and I finally got my hands on a packet so I'm really excited um, the thing about poppies is they want to be direct sown and 
they don't like having their roots disturbed. So you can grow them in like um, any kind of biodegradable pot they would probably be okay with. Um, but I like to think, you know, whenever you can or whenever the plants would prefer to be direct sown, it's kind of easier for me as well because um, I don't need to give them space under lights or space in the cold frame or space, space in the seed starting cells. Um, but it does make me nervous because there's so much that's out of your control when you direct sow as opposed to sowing indoors and um, like the wind and rain and animals and accidentally stepping on them and all these kinds of things, especially with these really tiny seeds. Um, but I did find in this book, in the flower garden, um, she has a lot of really good tips for direct sowing flowers. I sow them in rows so that when the seedlings come up, um, you can right away notice, oh, all of these seedlings are in a row. So they're definitely the ones that I planted rather than weeds because weeds won't grow all in a row. Another thing that she said is sprinkling a line of sand over top of those rows. Yeah, I'm also growing um, two other poppies that I don't have the seeds for yet. Um, so I'll put in a picture here. Um, but those are the um, purple peony poppy and the Pandora poppies. Um, the Pandoras are a beautiful like antique crushed lace look um, and the purple peony is a double flower. Double flowers again aren't super great for um, pollinators because they have been messed with by humans um, but they're for me and you know just as important as the pollinators. It's not true but I like to think that it's true sometimes when I'm having good self-esteem days. The plant that I found out about through the flower garden book um, is lavender larkspur. Now larkspur is related to the, it's the annual um, version of Belphinium. The Latin name is consolida, consolida, um, and annual larkspurs are much easier to grow than perennial Belphiniums. Belphiniums are notoriously difficult um, to grow. I also really love purple and yellow together. Yellow is my favorite color um, and whenever you have yellow and purple they just they just go so well together and, and especially the muted gray uh, gray purple with the yellow it's so beautiful so i found some seeds for the lavender larkspur at johnny's selected seeds so i'm going to definitely buy those and then hopefully they come in time for me to plant some this year um, but i i felt very excited when i was like going on a treasure hunt for these seeds and then i found them um after after no, hearing about them from this book. Um, another one that I'm growing and um, that I actually have a colony of right now is foxgloves. Um, foxgloves are biennials, so you sow them in the spring and then they bloom the next spring um, and then they die after they bloom. Um, but they do send off basal offshoots. So that's little plants that grow up from the base of the mother plant that's, um, that dies. Um, and those offshoots, if they're happy, can set up a little colony. So I do want to add some more seeds to that colony to kind of um, cover the whole front border in the front yard. Um, so I'm going to plant some more foxgloves this year and then they will bloom next year. Um, foxgloves are amazing for bees. They're so cute. They walk all the way inside the flower and then stick their little bum out and it's amazing. Um, Nigella I grew for the first time last year um, and it was so easy and amazing. You just throw the seeds at the ground um, and they will bloom like crazy. Just make sure they're watered, that's it. Um, and their seed heads are just as beautiful as the flowers. Um, I'm growing in the Miss Wilmot mix from Baker Creek this year and it's uh, really cool because it not only has the like, more typical lavender color but also blue and pink. And then the last one in the cottage garden is Scabiosa. Um, so there's an annual and perennial scabiosa, a really deep purple maroon um, in the backyard, but I'm going to get some seeds, just a mixed bag of seeds, to some annual scabiosa as well. Okay, so in the cutting garden, um, the biggest group of plants that I have um, are cosmos. So the first one that I have is the ruminato cosmos, um, so it's a bipinatus, which most of them are, um, and it's a really deep red. It's kind of like the Rubenza Cosmos, but dwarf. So I really like that it's a dwarf. Um, cosmos can get really tall, like two feet tall, um, and I wanted a more of a dwarf variety, so I picked this one up. Really excited for that. I also have the Seashells Cosmos. Um, these ones have trumpeted flowers, um, or like tubular flowers, um, which is really cool. Um, and they're a mix of like pale pink, medium to dark pink, but mostly they're grown for their flower shape. I have the bright lights cosmos as well. I have some good orange yellow tones in there. This one, Rudbeckia, is another one that I'm doing in the cutting garden. And this one is a short lived perennial, so it typically lasts for a few years. 
Um, I'm growing two different kinds of Rudbeckia. I have the straight species um, Rudbeckia herta, and then I also have um, cappuccino cultivar. Um, and these I started indoors um, a couple weeks ago, well, actually about a month ago, beginning of January, on my birthday, January 3rd. Um, and yeah, they're doing really well. They have about two sets of true leaves now um, after a month, and I've just moved some up into the cold frame um, with the bergamot. So um, that's another one that you want to start about eight to 10 weeks indoor, uh, before the last frost and um, start them indoors and then move them out um, after the last frost. I'm, I'm growing um, Tithonia, Mexican sunflower in my cutting garden. Um, those seeds are from Baker Creek as well. Um, they're like daisy sunflowers almost, and really cool, and really, really neat shade of orange, and the petals. So really excited to try those. They can get really tall, like six feet tall, um, but only in the really hot weather, and here in Vancouver it doesn't get more than 25 degrees Celsius normally. Um, so what is that? Let me see if I can do this in Fahrenheit. 80. 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Doesn't get more than 80 degrees Fahrenheit normally. Um, here. Uh, so probably it won't get more than, taller than a couple feet. Um, for sunflowers, I have the Velvet Queen sunflower. Um, I've been growing that for the past couple years. It's so beautiful. Um, and then my new type of sunflower that I got from Baker Creek is um, Henry Wild. Um, and it's, I love it because it's a really typical sunflower. Like it's very classic when you look, think of a sunflower or when you see like sunflower. Um, and it's symbols anywhere. Um, that's the kind, it's very classic. This could also definitely work in a cottage garden. Um, very classic sunflowers, I'm excited for that. And then the last category of plants in the cutting garden, I think, unless I add some more, um, are zinnias. Um, the one that I have from Baker Creek is Illumination. It's like a deep pink. I'm really excited for that. Um, and then I also, I'm going to order some from the Halifax Seed Company in Canada. Um, and those, I'm, I'm going to order the Sunbow mix, which are a dwarf mix, and the Fabergé mix, which have like a, a double flower surrounded by a single, like a row of single petals. So as far as herb garden flowers go, I mean, most herbs will send up flowers and people tend to be annoyed when that happens because the herbs tend to taste not very good when they go to flower. Um, but some of these um, herbs have beautiful flowers, like cilantro has um, just the most amazing white flowers. Um, so I think I'm going to grow a bunch of these for their flowers specifically. Um, so that's things like cilantro. Um, mint has stunning flowers, just make sure to put it in a container. Agastache, I have a bunch of different kinds of agastache, um, but the ones that I'm growing from seed are just the straight, um, I guess, ash funiculum. Um, and those are gonna be swarmed by bees um, all summer long. It smells so good. One for the herb garden, and that's nasturtium. And um, you've probably heard of nasturtium. And um, this is the Bloody Mary mix. I have never heard of this before in, uh, until I read the whole seed catalog from Baker Creek. Um, and it's just, the colors on here are just amazing. Um, Apparently, uh, the, this mix is a throwback to the highly decorative nasturtiums that seed catalogs offered at the turn of the 20th century. Uh, so that's quite cool. Oh, and another one for the herb garden um, is this toothache plant. Um, I actually uh, worked at a plant nursery last summer and one of my coworkers walked up to me and gave me one of these. And they have this uh, chemical compound in them that works as an analgesic um, in your mouth. Um, so it numbs your mouth and it feels really tingly. So, but I always thought after I tried it, like this would be a very cool like cocktail garnish for like some really like hipster cocktail restaurant. Um, so maybe I can make the big bucks like selling these to cocktail restaurants. Probably not, but probably I'll just like give them to my friends and freak them out. Um, but yeah, it's a toothache plant. Spilanthes acmella is the Latin name. Pretty excited for these. Uh, oh, you're supposed to only start them three to four weeks indoors before the frost. So that's pretty easy. That's all the flowers that I think that I'm growing. I'm getting super hungry. I haven't eaten lunch and it's like two o'clock. So I should probably go do that. Um, and then I will insert some clips from the books. Cool. 
So here in my backyard, um, this is where the herb garden is going to go. So my flowering herbs will go here as well. And these are my new in-ground, there's my lake. Um, and these are my new in-ground beds um, with some sad arugula and chard. Um, so this is where the herb garden plants are going to go in the backyard. Um, this is what I was referring to as the pollinator garden. Um, there are a bunch of perennials there, so it's mostly perennials, and I'll be talking about that in a separate video. There's the Clematis alpina that I was moving today. And then if we walk to the front yard, this is my gigantic farm. It's huge. There's an unknown umbrella in the front yard. I don't know who it belongs to. So in these raised beds, um, this is where I'm going to make the cutting garden. Um, so I already have some gladiolus bulbs that I'll talk about in my perennial video, um, as well as um, as well as some coreopsis. And this is Coryopsis Starling Clementine, and it's uh, orange and yellow, quite similar to the um, Bright Lights Cosmos. Um, so that's my raised beds. I've been growing vegetables. Oh, there's my rock garden. Um, I've been growing vegetables in these for the past couple years, and, and this year I want to try giving them to some cut flowers. This is the Clematis Montana, and um, it's really beautiful. It has, um, it's the Tetra Rose. It has uh, like bright pink flowers in spring. Um, I'll actually insert a picture of it if I can find one because it's, it's stunning and I'm really happy to finally have it climbing up this trellis. And I have some gladiolus um, underplanted here as well. Um, and this is my other raised bed for the cutting garden. I'm going to have sunflowers growing up the trellis, the Henry Wild sunflowers. And then this is going to be the cottage garden. Um, I've expanded it. This semicircle shape is new. Um, last year I just had it kind of going in there in an L shape, and then I just expanded it out. So all in here is going to be um, poppies. Um, and then I'll show you on the little diagram where the other ones are going to go. Um, but I'm excited to talk to you about, oh, here's my foxgloves that I was talking about earlier. Um, I'm excited to talk to you guys about my perennials that I have growing in here. Um, especially like the blue poppy anemone, um, Verbena bonariensis is one of my favorite cottage garden plants. Um, and I actually love perennials, so I'll definitely be talking about that. Um, but this space is where I'm going to put the poppies, um, larkspur, some more foxgloves. Um, here, this is, you're looking at the house, so I want to have the foxgloves kind of filling in here, along with some uh, larkspur. And then I have some clematis growing here, and um, honeysuckle. And then another perennial bed, it's just kind of a random perennial bed, and garlic here.
So I hope you enjoyed hearing about my um, upcoming annual flower garden. Um, like I just said, I'm going to do another video with my perennial flower garden because um, that's actually one of my great passions um, and I realized I totally didn't talk about it today. Um, so I will talk about that in a separate video. Um, but thank you for watching this one and I'm excited to hear what you're planting in your um, cutting garden. Okay, bye!